today speaking in front of a group of outstanding acupuncturists. And it's my hope that today, if you've never heard this information before, or you've heard it maybe just skimmed over or marginally, that you can walk away with some skills today and also consider, if you haven't already, possibly studying with Dr. Richard Tan in October when he comes sponsored by the APA. Hi, Tan. Sorry. <laughs> Hello, uh, how are you, Margaret? And I know Margaret hey. is studying with Dr. Tan because she and I work the same right. seminar together. <laughs> so it's nice to have you both. Nice to have everyone here. So welcome to all of you. Um, I guess what got me even interested in studying channel acupuncture with Dr. Tan is because I have a very strong interest in treating pain in my practice. Obviously, we all know we as acupuncturists treat pretty much what walks through the door, right? But most of us, somewhere in our hearts, have our favorite thing that we really enjoy treating and it seems to kind of gravitate to us. Well, for me, it's pain. I have lived a life in pain, actually. I uh, contracted Lyme disease in 1987 and it started me on my journey because back then they didn't really even know what Lyme was. And it got me into a space where I had tried everything with um, the Western medical model and unfortunately did not have any results because obviously if you have a bacterial infection in your blood and you don't take antibiotics, you're not going to have much success. So I quickly turned to alternative methods of healthcare and found Janice McKenzie and got incredible relief from my pain. And it just sparked my interest. And from that point forward, I knew I was destined to do this work. So here it was 20 years later and I'm doing this work. But anyway, um, long story short, when I was in acupuncture school, I was very interested in hearing about pain and pain management. And we had um, periodically a teacher here or there who would really have a strong interest in dealing with physical pain in the muscles or in the channels, Ted being one of them. Uh, he was one of my teachers when I was here and I learned a lot from him because here he studied with Dr. Tan. So when the opportunity for me came to actually study with Dr. Tan after I graduated, I had gone up to the seminar where Margaret and I had studied with him for four days and I couldn't actually believe what I was learning. It really did kind of restructure acupuncture for me in my mind and all that was possible and capable with this medicine. And it got me working and studying his methods and from this point forward it became my passion. And so while I do still treat with TCM, I treat with the Zongfu, treat with five element protocols, although to the life of me to this day I still have a hard time figuring out CSOE. <laughs> but, but I do have to say what I feel like I contribute to this medicine is a passion for treating pain. So what my goal is today to share with you is a beginning understanding of what you'll study if you choose to take the workshop on the 5th and 6th. So if you haven't already signed up for it and you like what you hear today, I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to get a whole lot more because it's not just going to be about treating musculoskeletal pain in your body, but Dr. Tan will be able to tell you how to treat Shen disorders, emotional disorders. He'll tell you how to treat physical, more like Zong Fu disorders of the digestion and infertility, the menstrual cycle with his channel techniques. And it's all based upon the system I'm going to teach you today. So we have one hour. And there's a lot to learn in an hour, so I'm just going to get moving forward with the information. Now, I've given everyone a handout, and hopefully you can follow along. Um, most of what I'm teaching you today is coming out of Dr. Tan's book, which is called Acupuncture 123. This is available on Amazon.com. It has pretty much everything in it you need to study and work with this medicine the way I'm going to present it to you today. So I would like you to consider, if you haven't already gotten a copy of this book, to please consider purchasing one. Very affordable. And it is actually the text he uses 
with his workshop and seminar. Plus, then you can be like me and get him to sign the front of it. <laughs> <laughs> so, here we go. Now, with um, do we all know what the um, obvious? Uh, I, not to insult anyone's intelligence, you know, we all obviously know we're dealing with the Chinese clock here. Why that's important today is actually that is one of the systems that Dr. Tan uses in balancing people's bodies, by balancing the energy when they're having pain or dysfunction in their body. So the clock is present here and it's also in your packet as a, uh, an aid to guide you and, and have you refer to it if you're maybe a little rusty, it's been a while maybe since some of you have looked at the clock, maybe that you're not working with that particular way of doing acupuncture, this is a good reminder for you. Okay, so as we move forward, what we'll look at today in this presentation is a little bit about the history of channel acupuncture, where it came from, how long it's been around. Hey, Les, how are you? Um, we're going to look at meridians in relationship. Um, maybe in a way that you hadn't even considered before. We're going to be looking at the different uh, meridian categories and how they pair together. We're actually going to look at the steps to perform channel acupuncture. There is an actual one, two, three step process, which is why this book is called Acupuncture One, Two, Three, because there's only three steps to this process. And if you do it and follow those three steps, uh, I think you'll realize that it's pretty much bulletproof. You'll find the area and the source of the pain in someone's body. So we're going to explain step one, explain step two, explain step three. So let's start off with a little bit of the history of this particular medicine. Um, channel acupuncture has its origin in the classics. Specifically, as you can see, um, the great compendium of acupuncture, Moxibustion, uh, from the Ming Dynasty. So it's been around for a very long time, and they've been working with this concept and theory. And um, it is obviously much older than, than the TCM theory. So in talking about this particular type of medicine, it does have its source in the classics. And for you to feel comfortable that you know, the medicine it has roots. Um, and then today, Dr. Richard Tan is really the practitioner who is putting this out there in a big way. He talks very openly about his teacher, Master Tung, and Ted and I were having a discussion about Master Tung before class starts. So again, another resource for all of you to be maybe as you're exploring Dr. Tan and his work, you can look into some of Master Tung's work as well. So, we all remember this chart from acupuncture school, right? Okay, so what you got here is essentially, yes, Janice. Those the lights. Oh, okay, thank you. There you oh, go. Good. Great. Excellent. <laughs> now, we, you have a kind of a semblance of this in your packet of information there, if you can't see the board. Although it is not this exact replica, it is a kind of like a, a typed version of it. So what you got here is the Chinese clock demonstrating relationships between the meridians. So what you got here obviously are the yin channels and the yin officials and then the yang channels and the yang officials. So we start this with the lung channel as uh, 3 to 5 a.m. moving to large intestine 5 to 7, stomach 7 to 9, spleen 9 to 11. We call these two channels the tie-in channels. So we have, obviously, lung is the hand tie-in channel, and spleen is the foot tie-in channel. So we look at these two in relationship together, okay? On the other side, we have the yang ming. We have the large intestine being the hand yang ming, and we have the stomach being the foot yang ming. As we move down the clock, we have the heart from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m., the small intestine from 1 to 3, the urinary bladder most active from 3 to 5 p.m., and the kidney most active from 5 to 7 p.m. In relationship, on the yin side, we have the lesser yin, which is the heart and the kidney as xiao yin, hand xiao yin, foot xiao yin. 
On the yang side, we have the small intestine as hand tayong and the urinary bladder as foot tayong. Moving forward from kidney, we have the pericardium becoming most active from 7 to 9, the triple burner coming most active from 9 to 11, gallbladder from 11 p.m. to 1 a.m., finally ending with liver from 1 to 3. So we have the Zhuiyan level and we have the Xiaoyang level. So pericardium being obviously hand Zhuiyan, foot Zhuiyan for liver, triple heater is the hand Xiaoyang and gallbladder foot Xiaoyang. So I have those put into your packet because as we're learning the Dr. Tan system, these are important relationships for us to recognize. So we're going to make it really simple and jump right to the technique. Acupuncture one, two, three. So we're going to start off with a, something very simple, um, which is uh, something that um, maybe quite a few of your patients suffer from. So let's just say some knee pain. How many people in here have currently have patients suffering from knee pain? Uh, I would say that's probably 100%. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So what we do is we're going to ask the patient to tell us exactly, to point with one finger, where is your knee pain? Now, what's important is that you pay specific attention to where they're pointing to because it might be a single pinpointed area which the TCMs are going to say, oh, you know, well isolated pain could possibly be some blood stagnation there if there are other blood stagnation um, signs and symptoms present, a pulse and tongue confer, or concur, I should say. Um, but in channel acupuncture, not so quick to go there, okay? So what we say, let's take an example. Let's say that the person has some serious knee pain right <coughs> here on the side, on the right side, okay? So has everybody got that right on the side? and they're able to isolate it really well and pinpoint it with one finger and say it's right there. It feels like a knife is stabbing it. Can everybody see where I'm pointing? Mm -hmm. Okay, so step one is to determine the sick, quote unquote sick, which is also known as involved meridian or channel. So in your best guesstimation based upon meridian placement, what is the sick channel? Gallbladder. The gallbladder, okay? So, if the person had said, oh, it's really bad here and it kind of comes across, what would the sick meridians be? Stomach, Stomach and gallbladder, right? And, and then somewhere in between. So we've, number one, we've identified the sick meridian based upon channel placement, not based upon TCM, diagnosis, no, no eight principle, no Zong Fu, uh, no CSOE. It's not about that for this, okay? But it's based strictly on which is the sick meridian. Step two, find a balancing channel using one of the five methods. Okay, so that's what we're going to do now is explain the five methods because that will give you something to walk away with, okay? And then third, using the mirror or the image to locate the pointer points that need needling. Those are our three steps that we're going to do. So the first thing we've already done is we have already identified the sick meridian. And for this example, it's going to be pinpointed directly to the right knee gallbladder channel. Okay? So is everybody clear with that so far? All right, the next thing we're going to look at then is we're going to look at Dr. Tan's five systems. Now, when you take his workshop, you will work with these extensively, and not just for physical pain, but like I said, for emotional issues, for, for Shen disturbance, for, for gynecology issues, for digestive issues, for asthma issues, you name it. You're going to be looking at this system for all of that with the channel and placing and involving the sick meridians, okay? But it's always easier to start off with like physical pain, it's the easiest to treat. 
So we're going to look at the five systems that we have here. So system one is going to be called Chinese name sharing. System two, branching meridians. Now I have all this in your packet for you so you kind of have a reminder. But the actual meat and bones of it, meat and potatoes of it, I should say, is going to be actually on your board here. Okay, so you might want to take some notes about that. System three, interior and exterior pair based upon the Shen Ko. All right? System four, Chinese clock, opposite. System five, Chinese clock, neighbor. So those are your five systems that we're going to be working with. And Dr. Tan says you can use any of those five systems to treat any disorder. You should choose which system works for you. And, you know, everybody's going to end up with a favorite system. But keep an open mind as well, because there might be a situation where you're used to treating on a system. And maybe, uh, how many people in here work with community acupuncture? Yeah, it might not always be exactly the right time to expose someone's stomach 30 right, in a clinical setting with, with a group setting. But that might be the point to choose in one of the systems. So you have to know to maybe go with another system that would give you an equally powerful point to choose, but you don't have the draping issues, okay? So now that we've got all the systems, let's go through each system. So the first system that we're going to look at is the Chinese name sharing system, okay? And when you choose this system, you will choose to needle on the opposite side of the pain. All right? So, when you have the pericardium, what is pericardium? Wh which one of the uh, meridians categorizations that we went through? You know, the Taiyin, Taiyang, which one is pericardium? Zhui yin. yin, right? So it's Han Zhui Yin. When you have in this system, an involvement in Han Zhui Yin, or the pericardium meridian, you will need the foot Zhui Yin, okay? Which is what? Liver, okay? When you have Han Xiao Yan, or Xiao Yin, Han Xiao Yin, which is heart, what is foot Xiao Yin? Kidney. So you'll be needling the kidney, okay? Now we're going to talk about where to needle on the kidney meridian and on which side of the body, but as you can see, obviously, we're dealing with the opposite side we would needle on, okay? So let's take an example. As we go down, we can see the lung is the hand tie-in. We're going to needle the foot tie-in. So for lung, we needle what? Spleen in this system. In large intestine, uh, which is Han Yang Ming, what are we going to needle? Stomach, foot Yang Ming. Triple burner, Han Xiao Yang would needle what? Gallbladder, okay? And then finally, the Tai Yang, Han Tai Yang, small intestine, we're going to needle the bladder, okay? So that's system one. Now, what I'm going to do is that system in mind. We're not, we're going to kind of skip over the other four systems and we're going to get to right where you're going to needle to. Because this is important in helping you to kind of complete the process. So what we've done so far is we've done step one. We've identified the sick channel, right? Which is gallbladder, which is which one? Foot Xiaoyang. It's foot Xiaoyang. So what do, where do I know I'm going to need to be sticking a needle? Han Xiaoyang, which is triple the triple heater. So the question is, we know it's the triple heater on the opposite side, but where do we put that needle is the question. Where do we put that needle, right? So we're going to skip the next four. We'll come back to, let's go to where we put the needle, which is step three. And this is going to be talking about the mirrors and the images of the body. And this, I personally find to be the most fascinating part of this medicine. And it just, if you've ever studied embryology and you almost look at how we're kind of folded in half, if you think about it, it's just the strangest thing. Look at this. Look at how analogous our body is, okay? We're going to start off with the arm. Keep it simple. I got a ball in a socket, right? What do I got right here on my leg? I got a ball in a socket. I got one long bone called the humerus. Mm -hmm. I got one long bone called a femur. I got a hinge joint on my knee. I got a hinge joint at my elbow. 
I have two bones in the lower arm, the radius and the ulna. I have two bones in the lower leg, the tibia and the fibula, right? I have eight carpal bones. I have seven tarsal bones. I have five metacarpal hand bones. I have five metacarpal foot bones. I have 14 phalanges and I have 14 phalanges. Do we see the analogous structure there? <laughs> okay. All right. That being said, you needle the analogous structure when you are needling on the mirror. So, on my arm, because I have pain in my gallbladder, which is foot shyong, right? Mm -hmm. So on my arm, where's the analogous structure to my knee? Where's the hinge joint? Elbow. My elbow. Where would be the analogous point to what? Gallbladder 32, right? Or 33. Where would be the analogous point? Triple burner 10. Excellent. That's exactly right. Now, when it is the right point, Dr. Tan said you will, upon palpation, feel a she point. Okay, a share point, right? So you're pressing along, and all of a sudden the person will say on the opposite side, you're feeling it, and they'll go, oh, that hurts. And you'll say, hmm, okay, boom, needle right in. <laughs> okay, not always a happy moment for the patient. <laughs> but curious because the patient may report a sudden change in the pain. And they will say, that's really weird. The pain just shifted and it moved right up my thigh. It moved up in here. And you're thinking, okay, that's like 31 you know, like right in between what? Gallbladder 30 and 31, right? Mm -hmm. So you're going to look where? Triple burner, right? But where? Near the shoulder. That's right. You're going to follow up the triple burner channel in the analogous place on the arm that the leg was feeling the pain. Leave that other needle in. Leave triple burner 10 in. But now it's almost like you're chasing the pain and the person says, yeah, the pain just shot up right to here, so you are going to put the needle in the ashi point up in here. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to ask the person, did you have any more pain? And they'll say, no. So you let the needle sit for about a half hour. It's that simple. You don't have to needle anywhere on the sore spot. In fact, Dr. Tan says it's like needling a screaming child. Because he said, this is the screaming child. This is the reason why the problem is happening. And so you leave it in and let the person process their needles. I had an absolutely miraculous treatment with this last week. It was actually just on a friend who happened to be visiting and didn't tell me. But back in January, this person had slipped on some black ice and had gotten a serious problem with pain in their knee and they they have a very physical job and they have been limping since January and I was watching this person limping along and I was just like what happened to your knee and they told me well I slid on black ice and I really hurt my knee and every time I play tennis it's getting worse and I'm, I don't know what to do I think I have a meniscus tear so the pain was right there so you tell me what needle did I use first of all let's go what's the sick meridian spleen okay so spleen at the knee Foot, foot what? Tie in. Tie in. So I had to use on the opposite side, on the elbow, which one? Long. Long, Long which is hand tie in. So what point did I needle? Long five. Long five. Very good. Absolutely. So stuck the long five in, he reported an immediate release of pain. Left the needles in. We didn't even retain him for a half hour. We left him in for five minutes. He still can't believe it. It is gone. And he said that just, he was playing tennis. He thought he thought of coming back, but I taught him how to acupress lung five. And he did acupressure with lung five and it went away. That's the power. It's almost like the, sh the, the channels in relationship are not communicating properly. And there's some kind of a block. And you're you're hitting the source of the energy blockage and it's opening up the flow to the part that's not flowing. Okay? Can I ask you a question? Yes, please, Jen. So suppose you have somebody that has a cartilage damage mm -hmm. on a channel, like the spleen. Yeah, with, with actual, physical, with actual yeah. physical changes. I mean, do you, have you found that it goes away? 
Well, I'll tell you, the pain gets really diminished. Now, the actual, I mean, it's promoting blood flow and chi flow to the damaged area. The cartilage tear itself may not resolve. They may need some additional surgery or whatever, but I have definitely noticed a decrease in the pain, without a doubt. Yes, Ted? Two things. I have bone on bone, both knees. I need both knees replaced. Mm -hmm. I treat myself. Five years ago, I had arthroscopic because it kept locking up on me. The guy couldn't believe I was walking. This doesn't work. I treated a doctor who had a left knee replacement, level four. The right knee replacement was the right knee was scheduled for knee replacement level ten. She just gave her medical leave of absence. Um, I did lung five, large intestine eleven, for her knee that needed to be replaced. In five minutes, 100 percent pain relief. So I treated her other knee with the other elbow and instantaneous pain relief. You'll see within, I would say, nanoseconds changes. Yeah. And if not, you pick the wrong meridian or you just pick a different system or a different area of the And then how long does it carry over? This, this patient had three treatments from me, maybe four, I can't remember. In a period of two weeks. I got an email from her three and a half years later, she still doesn't have a knee replacement. Wow. She Good says what little pain she has she can yeah. live with. Wow. And I don't have, I'll show you my x-rays, I have them on my phone. Yeah. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. And, and these are not exceptional results with this medicine. This is pretty much routine. And for if you, any of you, how many of you are already working with this medicine or know someone who does and have had similar results? Okay. Let me tell you about another situation with a woman who we just even did acupressure. We didn't even use a needle, okay? She had these deep pore veins contractures and she could not abduct her thumb at all. In fact, upon asking her if she could, that's about as far as we got and there was enormous pain. So here, okay, obviously we're, this one is what channel? The lung. The lung. So where do you think we needled and, and which channel? Spleen. Spleen on, on which part? The foot. On the foot. And all we did was go in with a very deep acupressure and boy, she, her eyes just went, she was just, and she couldn't believe the amount of pain in her foot on that side. After holding it with acupressure for, I would say, maybe 30 seconds, the thumb had a full range of motion with no pain in it. The foot was screaming. <laughs> I mean, there was a definite energy block there. But And then I taught her how to, she does this thing where she sticks on her right foot, she sticks her toe up and then just sticks her foot there and treats herself. And she is so happy. She works in a health food store. You would not believe the referrals I've gotten from that one. <laughs> I was just like, oh my gosh, thank you. So uh, yeah, if I seem enthusiastic, it's because I am. Because obviously nothing is 100%. I mean, there are some conditions that are going to be very stubborn. But I would say, more so than not, there has been tremendous change from using these techniques. Yes, Donna. Um, Janet. Is it always a specific point you treat, or could it actually be an ashi area that's not a point? Yes, absolutely, Donna. It can be an ashi point. And what's important about that is to pay close attention where the person's reporting the symptoms. Because let's take an example, all right? Let's say that the person has elbow pain, okay? So the pain is right there. So uh, FYI, okay, so here's my large intestine 11 and here's my lung 5, but my pain's right here. So what would we say is that point? It's between hand Tai Yin and between hand Yang Ming. So I'm going to look between foot Tai Yin and between foot Yang Ming, and somewhere in there is the Ashi point that you would needle. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then not to forget to chase the pain because you might have an energy block that you shift by placing a needle in, but then now it, um, it starts blocking someplace else. So the point of the matter is I needled my gallbladder here, but then the pain shifted up my leg. Don't ignore that one. Now you need to go and find the concurrent point of reference on the arm as well. Does that make sense to everyone? 
Okay, so basically, what I wanted to show you here is the mirrors and how that unfolds. What we've got is in the mirror and the reverse mirror. Okay, so re mirror and the reverse mirror. And you can use either or. And this will rationalize to you why you use stomach 38 for shoulder pain. That's not just some empirical thing that somebody threw in Deadman. There's a reason for it. And it's based on these classics, okay? So as we can see here, we have an arm and we have a leg. As you can see, there is congruence between the joints. And the upper arm, the upper leg, the lower arm, the lower leg, the hand, and the foot. Do we see that? But what's really curious here is that we can flip it, as you can see over here, we can treat shoulder pain right in through here, okay? This is kind of off a little bit. This probably should be a little bit higher on this side. And you can see why large intestine 15 lines up like congruently with stomach 38 as Yang Ming, okay? Do we see that? You can still treat here, as you can see, but then the hand becomes the hip. And this would be a really good system like in like a system like BJ has where she's in community you can't be exposing people's groins in a community setting. It's just not professional, okay? And, and grounds for a lawsuit, if you think about it. So you've got this nice system here that you can work with, BJ, and find it in a different way that works for you and your organization, okay? Now, so the reverse mirror, shoulder, foot, elbow, knee, hand, hip. You all should have that in your pack, okay? So, as we move along, now I know you're thinking to yourself, okay, well, what about the like Zong Fu issues? What about internal organ issues? Well, you can actually treat the arms and the legs for internal organ issues, and it's still the same process. Okay, so what happens if the person is having like, you know, a little agita up, you know, maybe some, what we would think would be some chi stagnation pain. They got the plumpid chi, the belching, and kind of up in here. And they're feeling a little full in through here. It's the same process. You identify the sick channel, right? The involved meridian. And then you have to decide which system you're going to work with. And then you have to pick your, pick your um, how you're going to work with this particular mirror or image. So for this, the hand would be the genitals, so the hands and feet would be the genitals. The elbow and the knee would be the umbilical region, and the shoulder and the hip would be the head region. And you could actually find that you could needle on the hand, the foot, the elbow, the knee, the shoulder, the hip to treat these areas. So the needles would go on the external limbs. Okay. Let's go back. And we're going to look at the different systems. And what you'll notice is they're slightly different. And you can think about these and think about how you want to work with it. And no one is better than the other. What I always like to do is find the point that is the most usher point of all. And then to me, that's the golden point. All right. So let's go to system number two. We've already looked at system one, which is the Chinese name sharing. So the example there is going to be hand tie yin, foot tie yin. Okay? So let's go to system two, which is our branching meridian. Now with the branching meridian, you're looking at the opposite energetic. So for this one, we're going to needle on either side of the paint. So you take your choice. But ideally, as Dr. Tan will tell you when you take his workshop, it's going to be probably where the ashi point is. All right? So for this one, if you're dealing with the Xiao Yin of the hand, then you should be needling the Xiao Yang of the foot. Okay? If your pain is on hand Xiao Yang, you should be needling foot Xiao Yin. If your pain is on hand tie yin, lung, you will be needling foot 
Kai, Yang, ladder on same or opposite side. Ideally, like I said, Asha point. Small intestine of the Tai Yang of the hand, we're going to needle the Tai Yin of the foot, which is the spleen. Pericardium, the Zhui Yin, we would be needling the foot Yang Ming, which is the stomach. Are you seeing that relationships and how it goes here that way? And then with the large intestine is obviously Han Yang Ming, we're going to deal with foot Zhui Yin. There's an energetic relationship here. You know, they form, with this particular one, when you look at them that on the Chinese clock, they form a particular configuration pattern when you look at how they interact together. Yes. Well, just to so with the example that you started, gallbladder, so what would be the, so, go there? so let's do it. So if we have gallbladder as foot Xiaoyang, we would go to hand Xiaoyin. So on either side, part three, right? And we're feeling around. It's like, man, it actually really is sore on me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Might just need that needle after all. Yeah, so you're going to feel it as a should point there, okay? And you can pick either side. So does that make sense to everyone? And there again, in answer to Donna's question previously, it does not have to be an exact point. It can be the points between. Now, we're going to throw a little piece of interestingness into the mix that's not in your packet, but I thought you'd find it interesting. Again, a la Dr. Tan, because he's the best. Well, in my personal opinion, for channel acupuncture. But he said, if you have a superficial problem, let's say, for instance, the skin. Dr. Tan will tell you, needle to the skin level. If you've got a muscle issue, where are you needling to? Muscle. The muscle. If you have a fascial issue, you're needling to the? Fascia. If you've got a bone issue, you're needling to the? Bone. bone. If it's in the joint, you needle into the joint. Okay? So, it's interesting because needling very superficially for skin problems it makes you might be like wow well that's kind of strange I'm not used to needling like that on some of these more zong bu type points that I would use to treat more for the internal conditions it's kind of strange needling superficially for stomach 36 but if you've got something going on on large intestine 11 this is skin rash you might very well have to needle superficially to that point to, re to release yes did you have a question John I'm looking at my skin right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Why do I know we're going to have a bunch of interesting experiments going on? Okay. So this is the branching meridian system. Let's go now to the next one, which is the interior-exterior pair based on Shen Ko and the elements. All right? So you're looking at, obviously... When, when you're looking at the Shen Ko cycle, we remember pericardium is matched up uh, externally with which? Triple, Triple heater. Heart and? Small intestine. Lung and? Large intestine. Um, I actually have that repeated twice. That's mm -hmm. strange. Okay. And then triple heater and pericardium and? Sure, Helen. You like it? Uh, yeah, I missed gallbladder. I missed a bunch of them here, so I apologize for that. You know what that was? Probably when I prepared this slide presentation, it was probably up way too late doing it. So let's go to the wood. Obviously, with gallbladder, we're working with, and with stomach, we're working with, and for kidney, we're working with. So could you add those to yours, please? Yes. <laughs> All right, so that's the interior-exterior pairs we're working with. Now, Chinese clock, which is referencing the clock I put on the front of your handout. And you're working with the energetic directly across the Chinese clock. So we're obviously um, in the three to five range right now, which is what time? What, what is the uh, meridian most active right now? Bladder. Bladder. So what we're going to do is if we've got something going on on the bladder channel, right? Let's say we have some pain in the foot, running along the side of the foot, okay? 
What would be the analogous structure based upon the mirror? The hand. The hand, okay? And so if you think about the bladder from three to five, what is most inactive right now on the Chinese clock? What is the energy the lowest in? Long. The long. So we would obviously put it be doing our needling in through the ashi point on the long channel. Yeah. Okay, actually as we go up here, we can do our needles there. Yes? Is that the same slide as system two? As system two, yeah, they are the same, they're the same ones. Mm -hmm. Exactly, very good, Margaret. And Dr. Tan talks about that too, that they're essentially the same thing, as so system two. How are they different then, um, the needling? I, I think it's the same needling. I think mm -hmm. he actually will say it in the seminar. And by the way, if any, he, you know, he does a lot of different seminars. I think he's only doing two days, but beyond the two days that you do here, you know you can get additional training from him, like very advanced classes on, on uh, feng shui and how to use that. I mean, he's, he's just has so much that he's offering. Unbelievable amounts of information. So um, let's move on to the final one, which is the neighbor, the neighbor. And this is the last one that we'll cover today, and then we'll have time to do some exercises, a little bit of uh, challenging ones, and see if you can get which, which meridians to treat and which points, okay? This is Chinese clock, the neighbor. And when we do this one, we're always obviously doing it hand to foot. So it's the neighbor that's on the foot. So if we go back to the first one, you can see the first slide we had. So if we're dealing with the liver, the neighbor would be the lung or the gallbladder. Okay, actually, here you go. And then it's always the, the foot, like you wouldn't do two hand meridians, you would do a foot and a hand. Okay? Is everybody clear with that? So, you ready to do some exercises? Can you go back to the fourth uh, slide again? The fifth sure. system slide again? Absolutely, please. let's go back. System four. Five. Five. Four, yeah. four or five. Yeah, System four and five is Chinese clock, the opposite and the neighbor. So for the neighbor, yeah, pericardium, cool. kidney, heart, spleen, lung, liver, large intestine, stomach, triple heater, gallbladder, small intestine, bladder. Actually, he is very specific about which neighbor to treat. That's not, this is one that I rarely use. I'll be really honest with you, I rarely use that system. So it's always the neighbor that's the on the clock after. On the clock after, after. yes. Okay. okay. And there again, you can decide whether you want to use the mirror or the reverse mirror. It's up to you. There's no one way that's right or correct. He's very clear in this book that whatever it is you're comfortable with, and even clinically, whatever is most advantageous to your patient's privacy or comfort. Okay, but what's nice about this system is that you're working with doing the needles on the arms and the legs so that it can be done in a community setting. Because the community setting has become quite popular and there's a lot of people out there getting treated that way. And this really opens up opportunities to help people get res resolution from pain, all right? So, yes. So, you have listed as an image to use the head. Mm -hmm. How would you use the head? So, let me show you how um, a head can be used. And I'm going to show you here. Here's an example. Can everybody see this? Okay. So, what we've got here is the head and the leg. If the person's having headache, pain, and we're working with the mirror, we can also work with the reverse mirror as well for this, okay? So we can, let's say they were having some pain in the temples here. What's the sick meridian? Right here. Okay, so what you can do is actually needle on the gallbladder channel on this particular one right here in that area looking for the ashi pain. What I like to do is I like to flip it and do um, Xiaoyang headaches, like the gallbladder pain headaches in the feet. 
I have found that to be really uh, powerful to eliminate those sorts of headaches. Okay. So if you have foot issues, would you treat the head? Uh, yes, most definitely. They go hand in hand. So you can actually look, he, like, and Joan, all of these pictures are in his book. You can treat the, use the hand or the foot to treat the head based upon that model right here. And it's always the same three steps. Identify the sick meridian is the first one. You're going to determine which system you're going to use and then you're going to decide the mirror or the image of where to use the points. Yes. Uh, Janet, uh, for the system five with the neighbor, mm -hmm. I don't understand something. If you're supposed to treat the neighbor that comes after mm -hmm. the meridian that has the problem, why would it be lung and liver instead of lung and large intestine, since large intestine comes after mm -hmm. lung? Mm -hmm. Let me just take a look at this in his book and see, like I said, this is actually, um, you know, not to be sounding like I'm not, I just rarely use this system. Let me see what he's saying about this, and I'll read it to you, Donna. Mm -hmm. Okay. System 5 uses the arrangement of the Chinese clock to pair meridians that are adjacent to each other. Hand meridians are paired with foot meridians, and foot meridians are paired with hand meridians. Yin meridians balance yin meridians, and yang meridians balance yang meridians. Okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. There you go. There's your answer. Okay. Okay. Anyone else? All right. Shall we do a few exercises and see what we're doing here? Let's get some interesting pain problems that we might have going on. Okay, so let's try, in fact, let me just give you one off the top of my head here. The person is having um, rotator cuff pain on the left side, rotator cuff pain. So in your mind, you have to ask yourself, well, where's rotator cuff pain? Where is the rotator cuff? Well, it's the four muscles. You know, the infraspinatus and the teres minor attach in through here, and the usual rotator cuff pain is right back in here, or they could be having pain in through here because the subscapularis attaches in here. So we have to ask that person very specifically, where's your rotator cuff pain? And they're going to say, it's right back in here, and it's kind of all in through this region. Okay? So, here's what I want you to do. In your mind, I want you to pick a system, one through five, and I want you to tell me where you're going to treat and the rationale. Take just whatever system you want to choose, okay? So here's my pain, right back in here, okay? So pick a system, one through five, then you, after you identify the sick meridian, you basically want to figure out what is the system I want to use, and if so, what is the meridian I want to use, and then you want to ask yourself, do I want to treat on the mirror or the reverse mirror? And then basically identify your point. So, Melissa. So I like using this one right here that you have. Yes. So right in that area you're pointing to would be SI 9 and 10. Okay. So I go to the opposite side, bladder, so I can go around like bladder 60, 61, 62, right in that area. Excellent. Perfect. Does everybody get how she, why she picked those? Great. And isn't that nice clinically? Like you said, your community so clinic. Yeah, it's really quick. You know, rather than have them hiking their shirt up and getting all uncomfortable, you can just, you know, and don't forget to palpate for the ashi point, right? Needle goes in the bladder 60 or ashi area, but then the next step is, did the pain shift? And anyway. it's funny because I do have patients who are like, wow, like I'll feel it moving and it is a really neat experience. Isn't it? Yep, mm -hmm. very good. That was excellent. Anybody else want to share a different point they might have chosen and why? No? Okay. Let's do another one then. Okay, here we go. Yes, Pam. Can you, do, you can do a spleen point. You yeah. can do a spleen point. So you could do... So what system would that be with the spleen point? Well, that would be the branching meridian. Okay, so let's look at the rationale. 
small intestine is hand tie yarn right. and the spleen would be foot tie in. Good. Absolutely. And so where would you where would you treat, Pam? I'm you can either treat on the mirror or the reverse mirror. Okay, well could you do like if it, lean three? Or my so using yes, you could definitely do right side? Well, you for the shoulder you would use somewhere on the foot. So it yeah. would be spleen three, four, ashi region. Right. No right. doubt about it. You oh. could even write, maybe even go up to spleen five. Right. And you poke around and you palpate with about enough pressure to blanch out your fingernail and you look for the ashi point and then in goes the needle. Okay. And then you chase it, chase the pain. Okay? I'm yeah. just so curious. I just wanted what what kind of needles do you do you find for this or is there a needle that you found that works well for this particular type of I just use my standard 18 by 30 from DBC. Oh, okay. <laughs> my little spring tops bulk. Yep. Okay. You know, I, I just like those needles because they seem to go in pretty smooth and yeah. they're thinner. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But uh, does okay. anybody else have any other, uh, Margaret, you use that hand method. Do you use that different, any different type? I like 18. I like them because they don't have silicone with DBC. Yeah, I do too. That's exactly. Yeah. So good question. Mm -hmm. um, Oh, do yes. And retention is half an hour. Retention is half hour. Yeah. Okay. Now he said in his workshop he's going to teach you that try to get him in as often as possible. You mm. know, <coughs> to, in the first few days, especially if it's been a acute injury type of thing or acute problem, he recommends treatment several days in a row. He said in his clinic because they're coming in more often, he may charge them a little less. That mm -hmm. obviously you have to figure out those dynamics on your own, some of you in a community setting who have package deals or whatever, you know, this that could be really advantageous for you and your patient to do work with, you know. Um, but, you know, person coming in and getting relief and then not showing up again for four more weeks, that's going to set them back in a big way. And there's a lot of times people will do that and then say, oh gosh, I didn't get any relief from acupuncture because they come in every four weeks. I personally have found if a person's suffering from something that is very specific type of pain or a di um, internal issue and we're looking to get some serious relief, I'll even give them half hour sessions instead of the full hour. Mm -hmm. And just, you know, they come in the office, they go right to the table, we get the needles in and take them out and they're, they just go right home rather than lengthier hour long treatments because then they, it's a little bit uh, less time, a little bit less money, they can come in a little bit more often to just get some relief. You know? Okay, here's a bugaboo. That's a big pain in your butt because it's a big pain in their butt. <laughs> Sciatic pain, right? <laughs> Bad joke. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, how are we going to treat it? Okay, so you have a couple of issues here. You have actual ouch and it's isolated or it's radiculating pain that's shooting down. So let's talk about the isolated pain to start. I have pain right here. What's the point? Okay, so pick a system. In fact, let's do it. Um, this half of the room, you guys do system one. This half of the room, you guys do system three. Isn't it ladder? Ladder? Oh, it's, okay. Oh, it you looked like ladder. <laughs> And the question is, for some people, it could be between the two, between gallbladder and bladder. Okay, so system one and system three, write down and tell me the rationale of what point you picked and why. Triple heater ten. Okay, so. What you want to do, so for, let's, let's look at system one to start, okay? So for system one, it's name sharing. So for gallbladder is what? Foot what? Foot Xiaoyang. So we're looking for hand Xiaoyang, which is? Triple heater. Triple heater. What's the analogous structure to the hip? The shoulder on the mirror and then on the reverse mirror, it could be the foot. Yeah, it could be the hand, right? Actually, 
it would be it's, the hand. Yeah, it would be the hand. So you can take either or, whatever works for you. Okay? So which point did you choose, Donna? Oh, well, I chose row one. I was in triple heater ten. I was in the uh, elbow, so triple heater. Um, 14. 14. Triple heater 14. Did you guys agree with that point? Triple heater 14, right? And if it was, if the pain was between the bladder and the gallbladder, we would be looking between the triple heater, right, and the small intestine. And you'd be palpating around for that ashy point, right? And oh, there it is. I got it. Needle goes in there. Then, what's the next step? We can't forget it. Chase the pain. And you keep needling it until the person reports that the pain is diminished. Then the needles are retained for one half hour. Okay? So, very good for this group. How about this group for system three? Did you come up with one? Yeah. What did you get? Liver gallbladder, absolutely. So could we go to liver four? You could go to liver four. Yes. Perfect. Liver liver four. Do we understand why she chose liver four? Think of the reverse mirror. You're flipping the leg around, right? Upside down, and it's the ankle goes to the hip, right? For liver gallbladder, you're looking at the uh, internal external tear. So liver four ashi point is the correct answer. Very good. These are challenges. That's why Dr. Tans will tell you, get, get your system and work with it, and you'll, you'll get your one that seems to speak to you. I love system one. I'm all about system one. How many people are all about system one? Okay. Right on to system one. <laughs> but, you know, we're at the end of our time together. We had our little learning exercise, but more so than anything, the whole purpose of me being here is obviously nobody walks away from an expert after an hour. Nobody walks away from an expert after a year. What, how you walk away from an expert is number one, go take his workshop. I'm going to tell you that straight up. If you can and have the means to do it, you will be so grateful to having done it because it will change the way you're looking at your practice and the way you're looking at pain. You become so effective at treating pain. And let's face it, what's a lion's share of your practice, right? I mean, I shouldn't presume that because we have people in here who are infertility people, but like, or other types of acupuncture. But for me, in my office, I'm getting pain walking through the door pretty much daily, okay? So I think it could be very much advantageous for you to work with this medicine and be able to offer your patients some real, really powerful solutions. And that being said, I want to thank you very much for your kind um, <laughs> My mentor right there. <laughs> so thank you, yes, and thank you, BJ. All right.